Hello class, today we're going over lesson 7.2, how to understand the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so let's just step, start with the definition for today. We only got one. So the converse basically means the opposite of something. So in regards to the Pythagorean theorem, the theorem itself tells us that if a triangle is a right triangle, then it satisfies the formula a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So the converse would tell us that if a triangle satisfies the theorem a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then it has to be a right triangle. Basically, you're working backwards through the conclusion to get to the same point. So again, the regular theorem tells us that if a triangle is a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Whereas the converse tells us if a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then it's a right triangle. All right, so our goal today, we are going to be working backwards using the Pythagorean theorem to find out if triangles are right triangles. And here's a hint for you guys. Don't just trust your eyes. The books are going to try to play some tricks on you, make them look like right triangles when they're not really right triangles. All righty, let's get started. So we got our first one here. We want to determine if the picture is a right triangle. So we have side lengths A, B, and C here. So as always, it's a good idea to label them. Remember, C always comes apart across from the largest angle, right? So we don't know if this is a right angle yet, but we know the side length across from it is going to be C. Our other two side lengths here, it doesn't really matter. So we'll label this one A and this one equal to B. So let's all, as always, write down our formula here. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And then let's go to plugging in our numbers. So A is 16, so instead of A, I will write 16, and it's still squared. B is 18, instead of B, I will write 18, and it's still squared. And last but not least, C is 34, so I will write 34 in place of C, and it's still a squared number. Alrighty, so this is a calculator one right here because these are some big numbers. So we'll do 60, 16 times 16, which is equal to 256. And then we're going to add to that 18 squared. 18 times 18 is equal to 324. And we want to find out if that is equal to 34 times 34, which is equal to 1,156. All right, so let's add these numbers here together. 256 plus 324 is equal to 580. So what do you think, class? Do you think 580 is equal to 1,156? I don't, right? These are different numbers here. So what's that mean? Well, Pythagorean's theorem was not satisfied here. A squared plus B squared was not equal to C squared, which means this is not a right triangle. I'm just going to draw a triangle. That's not a right triangle, right? Because A squared... 16 squared plus b squared 18 squared did not equal c squared or 34 squared so this is not a right triangle even though it looks like one right all right let's try some more of these here so next one which one of the shaded regions is a right triangle so i kind of like this one here we're gonna have to find out whether this shaded region over here or this shaded region over here is a right triangle so let's start with triangle a b c over here so as always, we're going to be using the formula a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So on this one, we have the square root of 9 squared plus 40 squared is equal to 121 squared. So the square root of 9 squared, that's a really easy one. Square roots just cancel out um, square numbers. So you just get um, 9 here. Whenever you see a square root and you square it, you'll just get the number underneath the root sign. So we get 9 plus 40 squared, I believe that's 160, but let me check, or 1600, I mean. 40 times 40 equals, yep, 1600 is equal to 121 squared, or 121 times 121, which is equal to 14,641. So without even adding these together, I mean, we can. We can clearly see that these are not equal, right? They're not even close. They're about, they're over... 10,000 off. So these are not equal here, which means this is not a right triangle. All right, let's see if I have enough room for the other one here. So on this one, we have two side lengths here. We got an A, a B, and a C. So this is triangle, um, maybe I'll just, uh, okay, X, Y, Z. So side length A is nine. So I have nine squared plus the square root of 40 
squared is equal to the square root of 121 squared. So 9 squared, that's the easy one. That's 81 plus four, the square root of 40 squared, just 40. And that'll be equal to the square root of 121 squared, which is just 121. All right, then we add 81 plus 40 together, and we will get 121. That equals 121. So yes, yes, this right here is a right triangle. So the triangle X, Y, Z is a right triangle because if we plug our numbers into the formula, we do indeed get A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. All right, just one more example for us here, class. So we want to find which of the following are right triangles. So we just need to plug these into our formula here. I'm going to write it in the top right. Now we just got to plug our numbers here and then solve. <clears throat> so for the first one, um, if you guys weren't uh, figuring it out already, the hypotenuse is always going to be the largest side. So whenever you see any of these numbers here and you see the largest number, that's the hypotenuse. And if it's not, then it's already not a right triangle. All right, so A is 3. So we have 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25. And indeed, 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. So 25 is equal to 25. So this one right here, yes, it's a right triangle. All right, next one here. We have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So for A, we'll plug in 5. We'll get 5 squared. For B, we'll plug in 6. We'll get 6 squared. And for C, we'll plug in 7. We'll get 7 squared. All right, so 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. And 7 squared is 49. So let's add these numbers together here. Well, 25 plus 36, that'll give us um, 61, I believe. We'll get 61 is equal to 49. Eh, that doesn't look true to me. All right, 61 doesn't equal 49. So this right here would be a big fat no. That is not a right triangle. All righty, last but not least, we'll do question C here. So we have A, which is equal to 30. So I'll plug in A for 30, 30 squared plus B is 40, 40 squared, which is equal to C, 50 squared. All right, 30 squared would give us 900. 40 squared would give us 1,600. Wait a second, I might have that wrong here. 30, oops. 30 times 30, yep, 900. 40 times 40, 1,600, yep is equal to 50 times 50 should be 2,500. It is. All right, then we add these together here. 900 plus 1,600 would indeed be 2,500, and that is equal to 2,500. All righty, so since this is indeed equal here, then yes, this one is a right triangle. All right, everybody, there's plenty more examples we can go over for these, but I'm going to cut it there. I think you guys got the gist of it. So make sure you're writing your conclusion today. Today we talked about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And make sure you're writing two complete sentences for a conclusion. You guys are not going to get credits on these notes until I see those two complete sentences. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in class tomorrow. Peace out, y'all.